इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द प्रॉब्लम स्मॉलेस्ट सम कंटिन्यूअस सब आर ए द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट वी हैव बीन गिवेन एन आर ए विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ एन इंटीजियर्स and we have to find the contiguous sub array which has the minimum sum and we have to return that particular minimum sum so if we will consider the sample test case that we have been given so in this test case we can clearly observe that the sub array which is having the minimum sum is nothing but the sub array which is starting from minus 4 and ending at minus 1 because this sub array is having the sum as minus 6 which is the minimum possible in this particular array so how can we find the minimum sum sub array so to find the minimum sum sub array there is a very basic and a brute force approach first of all so what we can do here is we can say that we can use the concept of pointers here and we can assign it like this suppose this is one i and suppose this is another index j so suppose we want the sub array sum starting from ith index till the jth index so what we can do is we can have a k which will start from i and it can run till j and we can find the sum of this particular sub array right and then what we can do is we can move our j to next uh, in element let's say here then again we can traverse uh, our k from this i till this j one by one k will start from this i and end at j so k will keep on incrementing one by one and it will help us to find the sum of the elements now this will be a uh, approach which will be brute force in nature because what we'll be doing here is we'll simply say that okay uh, we'll have i start from zero i is lesser than n then what we'll do is we'll do an i plus plus here right after this what we'll do is we'll say that okay j will start and j will be starting from let's say i j will be lesser than n and then j plus plus is what i'll be doing and then what we'll do is we'll mark our sum as zero and then as i said we'll be using the k pointer to move in the range from i to j to find the sum so what we'll do here is we'll say that okay uh, k starts from i and k is lesser equal to j then we will do a k we can do a k plus plus and then we can say that sum plus is equal to array of k so basically we can uh, move our k one by one through each of the elements uh, from the range i to j and we can find the sum then since we want to find the minimum sum sub array then what we can do is we can have a, a variable minimum which can be assigned as positive infinity and then what we can do is after the sum has been calculated using this loop then we will say that okay the minimum is equal to nothing but the minimum uh, that i have seen up till now comma the current sum so i'll always keep a track of the minimum sum that i have seen up till now and i'll keep on updating my minimum but this approach will be order of n cube in in nature because the outer loop i loop will take order of n time the j loop will again take order of n time and the k loop will also take order of n time so it will be order of n cube in nature right but if i want to optimize it a little bit further so instead of having an order of n cube complexity i can do it in order of n square as well how i can do it in order of n square as well so instead of having a k loop what we can observe is we are trying to use the k loop and in this we are doing something again and again that is repeatedly we are performing a particular task and the thing is if we are doing it like this suppose our i is standing somewhere here and our j is here so next time our j moves here right so in this case what is the sub array the sub array will be from here to here if we have already found the sum from this i till this j and suppose that after that j moves here then only one element is added so i'll i can directly add this particular element instead of uh, starting from this i again correct so in that case what we can simply do here is to find the sum we can say that we will mark our sum as zero before j starts and then we will simply say that sum plus is equal to nothing but array of j right and then every time we'll keep a track of the minimum sum so we'll say that minimum is equal to nothing but the minimum sum up till now uh, comma the current sum that i have calculated current sub array sum okay now this approach is also not optimal because it takes order of n square time in the worst case because we are using two nested loops right but can we do it a bit more optimal yes we can do it a bit more optimally now if i would have asked in this question if i would have asked you a direct question that okay tell me that what is the maximum sum sub array in that case what what will come to your mind if i ask you to tell me the maximum sum sub array in that case in your mind there will be an algorithm that will be coming and the algorithm will be nothing but the cadenz algorithm right because using the cadenz algorithm we can in order of n time we can easily find the maximum sum sub array but here we here the condition is only change a little bit and we have to find the minimum sum sub array 
So the condition in the Cadence algorithm will change a little bit only and everything else will remain the same. But let's quickly see what will happen and why it will happen and why it is very similar to Cadence algorithm only. Uh, now what we'll do here is, since we want to find the minimum sum, so in this case, what we'll be doing first of all is, we'll be having a minimum, okay, we'll be having a minimum variable and initially, uh, like it will be storing the overall minimum sub array sum. So in, in this case, what we'll first of all do is, we'll first of all uh, initialize our minimum to int maximum, right? That is nothing but the positive infinity. So first of all, we'll initialize our minimum to int maximum. That is nothing but the positive infinity. Because if we want to find something uh, minimum, then we first of all initialize it as a very high value. So we'll initialize it as int maximum. Then we'll start iterating through the array and we'll also keep a track of the sum of the array like sum, the current sum. So, we'll mark our sum as 0 initially, okay? And then I'll come to this element. So, when I come to this element, so I'll add it up in my sum. So, when I add the current element in my sum, the sum gets updated to 3. Now, I'll check it with the minimum. So, if I compare it with the minimum, so the minimum is infinity, whereas the current sum is 3. So, I'll say that, okay, let's update our minimum to 3 because the current sum is lesser than the minimum. So, I'll update the minimum to 3. After this, if I move forward, let's say if I move forward, so I'll move forward to this element. Now, when I move forward to this element, so you can see there is a conflict that is occurring. Because if you see, if I'm considering, if I'm uh, considering this particular sub array, suppose that I'm at least considering this particular sub array. So in that case, this element is negative, which will help me to get a lower sum, which will help me to get a minimum sum. But if I look at this positive element, that is three. So that is a positive element. And if I'm adding a positive element, if I'm keeping a positive element in the sub array, right, if there, if there is this 3 and this is minus 4, so in this case, what is happening? I am basically increasing the sub array sum. And in that case, I will not get a minimum sub array, right? I will not get the sub array with the minimum sum. So in that case, what I need to do is, I need to, I need to think that, okay, let's say that we can start our sub, can we start our sub array from here? Because if I start from here, then the sub array sum will be minus 4. But if I take this uh, element 3 as well, in that case, my sub array sum will be minus 1. If I don't take it, then my sub array sum here, if I start it from minus 4 only, then it will be minus 4. So, which is minimum? The minus 4 is minimum, right? Because if I take a positive element along with me, in that case, I'll get, I'll not get a lower sum and I want the minimum sub array sum. So, in that case, what I can observe is that whenever, whenever I'll check if the sum is greater than 0, right? If it happens that the sum becomes greater than 0, then I should mark my sum as 0. And in the Cadence algorithm, what we used to do was, whenever the sum became negative, then we used to mark it as 0 because we wanted the maximum sum sub array. So, in that case, whenever the sum became negative, so we did not want it to take that sub array. So, we always started the sum from 0. Here also, in this case, since we want the minimum sum sub array, so in that case, whenever the sum is positive, so if this particular region is positive, so we can say that we will start from from scratch, we will start from 0 again. Why? Because we want the minimum sub, sub array. So, if we take a positive element along with us, if we take a positive sum along with us, in that case, the sum that we will be getting will be not minimum. But if we start again, then if we can see here, if we take these two elements, in that case, the sum will be minus 1 till here. Right? But if I don't take it and I start from here only, then the sum will be minus 4, which is lower, which is more, which is much more optimal answer for me because I am wanting to find the minimum sub array sum. So, whenever the sum is greater than 0, then I'll mark it as 0 again. So, what I'll do is, I'll mark the sum as 0. And then after that, I'll move to this 4. I'll move to this element that is minus 4. Now, when I move to this, so I'll add it to my sum, so that my sum now will get, get updated to minus 4. Now, I'll check it with the minimum sub array sum that I've seen up till now. So, I can observe that uh, currently the sum that I'm having, it is lower. So, I'll update the minimum with minus 4. And then I'll proceed further. So now I'll move, like I'll check, is my sum lesser than 0? Like is my sum greater than 0? No, it is not greater than 0. So I'll not do nothing with it. Then I move to the element 2. So after this, I'll add 2 to my sum. So in that case, what happens? My sum now becomes minus 2. Now it is still negative and I'll, I will now check, is minus 2 uh, lesser than minus 4? No, minus 4 is still lesser. So I'll say that, okay, let's move forward. And the sum is also not uh, negative, uh, like sum is also not positive, so I'll not mark it as 0. Then, I, then what I'll do is, I'll move to this minus 3. When I move to this element, so in that case, I'll add minus 3 to the sum. So in that case, what will happen? The, now the sum will become minus 5. And minus 5 is lesser than minus 4. So in that case, I'll update the minimum sum as minus 5 now. Okay, minimum sub array sum. After that, I'll move to the next element. So I move to minus 1. Now, if I move to minus 1, 
So I'll add minus one to the sabare sum. So now the sum becomes nothing but minus six because earlier it was minus five. Now it becomes minus six. Now I'll check it with the minimum uh, sabare sum that I've seen up till now. So I can see that uh, minus six is lesser than minus five. So I'll update the minimum with minus six now. And then I can observe that this is the sabare that is having the minimum sum up till now. After this, what will happen? Uh, I'll move to the next element. So when I move to seven, then I'll add seven to the sum. Now the sum becomes positive. That is nothing but one here. Okay, because minus six plus seven is nothing but one. So in this case, I can see that one is not lesser than minus six. So I'll not update my minimum, and I can observe that the sabare sum is now positive. So since the sabare sum is now positive, so I'll mark it as zero. So I'll uh, now I'll mark it as zero. When I mark it as zero, so what will happen? I'll move to the next index now. So now I move to minus five. So now I'll update, like I'll add minus five to the sum. So now my sum will become what? My sum will become nothing but minus five. So I'll check is minus five uh, greater than uh, like is minus five lesser than uh, the current minimum sabare sum? No, it is not. So in that case, I'll not update my minimum sabare sum, and then I'll move forward. So now you can see that I have exhausted the array, and now my minimum is containing minus six. That means that the minimum sabare sum is nothing but minus six. That is nothing but this particular. Uh, sabare that is minus four, two, minus three, and minus one because the overall sabare uh, sum is nothing but minus six, and that is the minimum sabare sum that we can have. Okay, so that is how we are doing this particular question with just a twist in the uh, Cadence algorithm because in the Cadence algorithm, what we used to do was whenever the sum became negative, so we used to mark the sum as zero. Now, whenever the sum becomes positive, so since we want to find the minimum sum, so if we are carrying a positive sum, so we'll not be able to get a minimum sum because we will want more negative sum. So in that case, whenever the sum is positive, so we'll mark it as zero because in this case we are wanting the minimum sabare sum. So this is the algorithm. Now let us try to write the code for it as well. So what we'll be doing here is we'll first of all uh, have the uh, array. So we have been given the array as a. Let's mark. It. Let's say that array is a. So first of all, we'll find the size of the array. So the size of the array is nothing but let's say a dot size, right? After this, what we'll do is we'll have a minimum. So initially, we'll mark our minimum as positive infinity. Let's say uh, let's say int max. Then what we'll do is we'll start our iteration. So we'll say that okay, for int i starts from zero, right? So we'll start from the zero index till the last index of the array. And then what I'll be doing here is. I'll say that okay. Let's add the current element to the sum. So I'll say that sum plus is equal to nothing but r of i, like the ith element. Now what I'll do is I'll check that if uh, if it happens that the current minimum is greater than the sum. So if my uh, if my current sabare sum that I'm having if it is lesser than the current uh, minimum. So in that case I'll update my minimum with the current sum. Right. That is what I'll be doing. And another thing as I said that I'll be doing is if suppose that the sum uh, is greater than zero. So if I'm having the sum as positive. Uh, if I am having a particular sabare sum as positive, then I'll restart because I'll I'll consider the new sabare because since I want to find the minimum sabare sum, so in that case I should uh, not take a positive sum. So in that case I'll mark my sum as uh, zero again because I'll be restarting. As as you can see here, uh, if I'll uh, see till here, so till here the sum was what three, and uh, if the sum was three, then if I consider uh, the sabare three and then minus four also, till here the sum will be minus one. So in that case, I am getting minus one, which is negative value. But if suppose that I started from here only, then the sabare sum will be minus four. So if I am getting a particular sabare sum as uh, uh, like if I am getting a particular sum as positive, then I'll mark it as zero because I'll restart because I can get a much lower value, and that is what my target is because I want a minimum sabare sum. Here. Okay. So in this case, what I'll be doing here is uh, I'll be doing if the sum is greater than zero, so I'll mark the sum as zero. Okay. And in the end, we can simply return the minimum sabare sum that we have calculated. Now you can see that we are doing this in just one traversal, so the time complexity will be nothing but order of n here. Now let's quickly try and uh, compile this code to see if there is any error in this particular code or not. Okay, so we are uh, having some error. Yes, I did not take the sum, so I should mark the sum as zero. In, uh, I have not declared it. Now let's try and compile it to see if it works or not. It works on the samples. Let's try and submit the code as well. So you can clearly observe that our solution was able to pass all the test cases that were mentioned here. Now talking about the time complexity of our code, so the time complexity of our code will be nothing but order of n because uh, we are just traversing the array once, okay? And the space complexity will be nothing but order of one because we are not taking any extra space. If you understood this uh, question, which was nothing but uh, one step forward of Cadence algorithm, or you can say directly that it was nothing but Cadence algorithm with a slight change. 
So if you understood this problem, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe the channel as well and comment down understood as well. Thank you for watching this video.